Hello, everybody! Yeah! Vlogtober is here, so watch our vlogs. October is here, so we're singing this song. We're vlogging every day for you, our friends. So grab a snack, relax, and watch till the end. Vlogtober is here, and we're gonna vlog. All right, you guys. Welcome to Jacqueline's earring tutorial. Look how cute these are, you guys. Can you see them? I'm sure you guys could see these earrings. They're Mickey ghost earrings, and Jacqueline made them with her Cricut machine and Shrinky Dinks. And look how cute they came out, you guys. So she's gonna show you guys how to make them, and she also made Mickey pumpkins, you guys. These were white to begin with, so it was perfect. She had to color the pumpkin ones. She didn't have the correct markers because I think you're supposed to use like an alcohol based like marker or a, a paint marker. I think they came out really cute though. But anyway, but she's going to show you guys how to do it in this video. So let's go. Hey everybody, Jacqueline here. All right, so here's the pumpkin earrings mom was talking about. I think they came out pretty cute, especially for my first time. You know, the coloring job isn't great, but again, for my first time, not too shabby in my opinion. So here is the shrinky dink paper I'm using. It's the opaque sheets. I know there's a lot of different kinds of sheets that you can use. I think there's even ones that you can put through your printer and print things on. I don't have that one, so I'm just using these today. All right, so now we're going into my photo editor. I do apologize that the quality of these next few clips aren't that great. I think I had my settings wrong when I was screen recording, so you're gonna have to bear with that for the next couple of minutes here and I did make these shapes myself so there's a little example you could see on the left I basically found uh, the Mickey pumpkin a picture of it online I put it in my editor and then I just traced around the eyes nose and mouth um, put the ears on there and I actually drew the stem on my own because the one in real life has a different kind of stem. And then as you can see here on the right side, I'm just editing up my ghost figure a little bit. I actually forgot to start recording before I started making the shapes and everything. So that's my fault. Um, but what I did for the ghost, I just copied and pasted the pumpkin figure that I already made and then took the stem off. And then as you can see here, I'm lifting up his forehead a little bit to make it a little more chunky. And this is the most important step. Do not forget the hole for your earring hook. I don't know how big exactly I made this circle um, for that hole, but just remember the shrieky dinks are gonna shrink to about a third of the original size of whatever shape you're making. Here's an example of the ghost I was going for. I did do the eyes and mouth a little bit differently. All right, then you're gonna wanna go ahead and save your image as a PNG. That will give us the ability to save it with a transparent background. And here I'm just making the DPI really high so that the image quality itself is high. And that will give us super crisp lines so that when we cut it, um, our Cricut will be able to identify those lines. And in reality, you probably don't really need the DPI that high, but I just did it because I, I want to, all right? Go easy on me, you guys. Alrighty, then you're gonna wanna open your Cricut design space and you're gonna wanna import your image. So wherever you save that, go ahead and open it. We're gonna click simple for the image type because that's what this is. It's a simple image, just, you know, one color on a transparent background. Then you're gonna wanna select cut only. Then the next page, it's gonna put it on your mat essentially. Um, it's gonna be the wrong size though. So if you go up to the top, it says size, you can adjust the width and the height. What I found works best, um, at least for this earring this time around, um, I like to make it about three inches. Now you'll see the width is a little bit greater than three, but the smallest measurement out of those two is three. So that's how I like to do it. This image is a little bit oblong. So I just make whatever the smallest measurement is out of the two width and height, at least three inches. Okay, then you're gonna wanna duplicate your image. Depends on how many earrings you're making, of course. So I'm making 
two sets, one for me and one for my mom. So I'm going to do four. You know, maybe you only have one ear that's pierced or you want to be a pirate. You could just do one. Totally up to you. All right, so then you're gonna wanna open the menu. Uh, there's a little button for it on the top left corner of your Cricut Design Space. And you're gonna click on Manage Custom Materials. Now, when I made my very first pair of earrings, this is what I had a hard time with. It took a lot of trial and error to try to figure out what the best settings were to cut out the shrinky dink material itself. Now, when you click on manage custom materials, you'll see all of these different materials pop up that the Cricut can cut, but you're gonna wanna scroll all the way down to the bottom where it says new custom material. And I already did this. So for the sake of this recording, I'm just gonna make a test material. Now here are the magic numbers, at least for me, this is what works best with my Cricut and this opaque shrinky dink material that we're using in this video. So for the cut pressure, I hiked it all the way up to 350. That's what works best for me. And then for the multi-cut option, I did it eight times. So what that means is it's gonna cut each cut in your image eight times instead of the regular, which is one. Now, of course, you can experiment with your own settings. This is what I found works best for me. I tried it at four times, six times, even seven times. And I still found that the eight times was perfect. Now, I deleted that custom material because, again, I already made my custom material and I titled it Shrinky Dink, as you can see right here and that's using the fine point blade. Then when you hit continue, it's gonna show all of your images on your Cricut mat. And what's nice about this, it really does look like this after all of your images are cut. It really is in the exact position that you put them in. Of course, don't forget to set your Cricut machine to custom, because again, we are using a custom material. I have the Cricut Explore Air 2, and I actually got this on sale at Michael's a while back. I don't think they have it anymore because I did look it up and I couldn't find it. So you never know, Google it for yourself if you're curious. But um, yeah, the color is so pretty and it has rose gold accents. I'm really glad I found this one. It's adorable. When I hit continue, it's setting everything up. It's looking for my material. Um, and I have mine under favorites already, but I'm assuming you do not. So you're just gonna hit browse all materials. You scroll down about halfway and you'll see my materials. And that's where all your materials will be that you've created using that manage custom materials button. And then from here, it's pretty self-explanatory. You just load in your mat, you hit the start button and it's off to the races. It's gonna start going. I wish the process actually did go this fast, but this footage you're seeing is sped up. In total, the whole thing took about 12 minutes, which is not bad at all in my opinion. Now, the one thing I will say is if you have a standard grip mat or a strong grip mat, I would highly suggest using one of those. So I only have the light grip mat. This is the one that came with my Cricut bundle. And you'll see in these clips, some of the pieces that it's cutting out actually fall out because the light grip mat isn't the grippiest. So I do think using one of those other two mats would work much better, but can you use a light grip mat for this? Of course. So as you can see, it's just finishing up. Then you unload your mat. And this really does cut the shrinky dinks out very well. I could not imagine trying to do this with scissors or an X-Acto knife. And because we have it on the eight times cut setting, these pop out super easily. Some of them do get a little bit stuck like on the corners, but you just peel it off and, and it pops out. So not difficult at all. And then I used that excess that you see at the bottom for my next pair of earrings. Look at him, he's so cute. A good tip for you guys, uh, some of the plastic from the shrinky dink paper will get stuck on your mat and in the blade. So I recommend using a baby wipe that 
works really well. And as you can see here, you can pop the blade out to clean it even better. It's just a little button that's on the top. Now I'm gonna put the Mickey Ghosts in the toaster oven. The instructions for these Shrinky Dinks said to put your oven at 325. And I think it said it could take one to three minutes. It did not take long at all. It was definitely less than three minutes. And I even started heating up the toaster oven a little bit beforehand so it could get nice and toasty. And you are seeing this in real time. So this is what happens. The shapes shrink and they get all curly. You do have to keep your fingers crossed that they don't stick to themselves. Haven't had it happen yet. Hopefully it doesn't happen to you either. They are flattening out a little bit now. I do leave them in there for a minute just to really make sure that they're done curling up. And when you take them out, they will be a little bit curly still. So you can either get a glass or use your fingers like me, which probably isn't very safe because it is super hot. But I do recommend flattening them out just a little bit. It is hard to get them completely flat, but you know, I think they look pretty darn good. All right, now we're on to attaching the earring hooks. I do have these needle nose jewelry pliers that you're seeing here in the video, which does make it a lot easier to attach the hook to the shrinky dink since we are working with a pretty small area here. And here is the finished product. I think they came out so cute. We are so excited to wear these for this Halloween season, as well as the Mickey pumpkins that I made. If you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up. Really helps us out and subscribe if you're new to our channel. We're doing Vlogtober all month long, so we'll see you in our next video. Thanks for watching.